Hey guys and welcome to my channel. In this video we're going to be talking about the blind spots, okay? In retrospect, a lot of time hindsight can be 2020, right? Um, and when we're actively in situations, maybe due to our lack of emotional maturity or ignorance, us being naive, um, being swept up in our own perceptions and the stories and resistance within ourselves we don't see things or want to step in, step into acceptance about things so in this video um, i'm going to talk about three blind spots that uh, are pitfalls that chances are you fell into when you were in that toxic relationship and it kept you in a bondage or it kept you in a situation longer than you needed to be Okay, <clears throat> and now that we're out of that situation, of course, as we're doing the work, we want to be able to fully acknowledge these things because we can potentially change the things that we minimally are willing to acknowledge, right? So let's talk about these blind spots in the mirrors. For those of you out there who have a driver's license, um, we know that when we get into a vehicle, we have mirrors stationed minimally in three different places depending on what kind of vehicle we're driving right we have the rear view mirror and then we have the side mirrors um, that help us see our environment around us as much as possible but what is written very small on the side mirrors is it, it alerts you to let you know that there are some blind spots, okay? So it's possible that there's a motorcycle rider or a, a bicycle or a small car that happens to be covered by the blind spot in that mirror. So we have to be very careful, you know, when we're making turns, when we're changing lanes and such, because there may be something there that the mirror is not showing you. Okay, so we know what the narcissist, you know, they like to wear masks and they're presenting the mirror that they want you to perceive, the illusion that they want to give you about who they are, what they stand for, what, you know, what they're um, offering you versus what they're really offering you. And, you know, there's a lot of blind spots when dealing with them externally. But in this video, guys, I want to take more of approach of an internal. As you can see, if you are familiar with my channel, I do a lot of um, insightfulness because we're the person that we have control over pretty much. And we're the person that can take a lesson, that can... Um, have a shift in our lives that can illuminate, digress, and, you know, the worst end of it. But either way, um, starting with ourselves is going to always be the best point and most empowering aspect to draw upon, okay? So with that being said, you guys, let's go ahead and get into my list of these blind spots, all right? So the first thing that I have here on my list is valuing the person for who they aren't. If you really think about this and get honest and open with yourself, were you valuing that toxic person, valuing that narcissist for someone they weren't? At the end of the day, were you actually valuing them for someone that they actually weren't? Chances are you were. And, you know, we call this resistance. We call this falling for the love bomb. You know, the illusional, the delusion, the illusional person that they presented to you that wasn't really them. And when the mask fell and they showed you who they really were, you were still valuing them for the love bomb. You were still valuing them for the first impressions. Um, you were still valuing them for what you hope they could switch back to perceiving to be. All right. So at that point, you're valuing them for something that they aren't. 
Okay, if someone can pretend to be something for one minute, it doesn't mean that they're actually that. But if that's what we hold on to, of course, and that's what we don't want to let go of, because perceiving them as the other way goes against a greater offense to us, you know, our unwillingness to accept what actually is. Okay, so the more we want to stay in resistance, obviously, the more we're going to be more geared to valuing them for who they aren't. Okay, because the illusion allows us to do what? It allows us to continue the story. It allows us to stay in a relationship. It gives us hope, right? False hope. But, you know, here we are. We're in a land of illusions and delusions, okay? All right, so that's number one, valuing the person for who they aren't. Major pitfall, major pitfall, big lesson to take moving forward, all right? Number two, not looking at true compatibility. Not looking at true compatibility. Think about it. It was an uphill battle with this person at a certain point. As soon as that love bomb phase ended, it was an uphill battle with them, trying to force the issue, trying to prove your self-worth, trying to prove your point, trying to get them on the same page with you, trying to get them to be equally yoked with you. So a blind spot in the mirror there is not actually acknowledging the lack of incompatibility, if you want to look at it that way, are basically not looking at the true compatibility of the situation, which there is none. You know, and whatever you perceive to be compatible, there's not enough to have, you know, a healthy relationship. Okay, is it compatibility? Oh, we're both two human beings. We're both alive. Um... Is it compatibility enough to be physically attracted to them and everything else is in a dumpster? So, you know, really stepping out of our emotions and into our logic and being out of resistance, you know, because sometimes when we want something, we want it now. I want to be in love now. I want to be a wife or a husband now. I want to have a baby now. You know, when we're in those desperations, when we're stubborn about it, we will force we could we could possibly force the issue with the wrong person at that point. We're turning a blind eye, we're minimizing things, and we're not seeing the true essence of what we need to see that's letting us know that mm, this isn't the way we want to go and just not with this person. If it's the way to go, yes, you still can have this in your life, just not with them. And you gotta be patient and wait for the right person. Okay. Hmm. See a little nap. <laughs> so yeah, number two, not looking at the true compatibility of a situation. All right. So all of this is leading me to number three here in the blind spots, which is not making space for the truth. <laughs> not making space for the truth. Why would someone not make space for the truth? Because sometimes the truth hurts that person. And like I said, it's going against the grind. You know, it may be, you know, obviously if you had your heart set on this and it's actually that, it may be or seem or appear to be more comforting to you to latch on to the lies and illusions, the gaslighting than it is to just fully acknowledge the truth. But we, as we mature in our emotional maturity, and I've said this in other videos, confident people, people who are out of a lack mentality, they're going to honor and appreciate the truth and not fight against it. You know, confident people work with the truth. You know, self-sufficient people work with the truth. And when I say self-sufficient, Don't just narrow that down to like materialism. Let's, we're talking about psychologically here. I'm self-sufficient, meaning that I'm not so attached to you that I can't have a healthy life 
without you being in it. You see what I'm saying? So from those type of angles, you guys, all right? So let's be mindful about the blind spots, you guys. So let's go ahead down to three again. Um, valuing the person for who they aren't. Not looking at the true compatibility between you and that person, organization or whatever, you know, that the toxic thing is or person in your life. And then not making space for the truth, you guys. Because if you're not making space for the truth, you're making space for lies. All right. So, you know, we definitely want to be mindful of those blind spots. All right. So if this video resonated with you, go ahead and hit the like button. If you haven't done so, feel free to subscribe to my channel, you guys. Um, this is a great place to come to increase your emotional maturity. Definitely a great place to come to learn about narcissistic abuse, to do that shadow work on yourself and understand relationships in life because that's what we're having all day long relationships with people places and things and then if you find you know what i have a great relationships in this area or aspect in my life and not in this one then you can go ahead and roll your sleeves up stand bare in the mirror and work on those things all right nobody's perfect we all have things to work on in life all right so with that being said, you guys, thank you for tuning in. I do offer the one-on-one -on -one coaching, of course. You can visit my website, LakiaCrawford.com, if you are interested in working with me one-on-one. -on -one. I am a general life coach. Um, I help people through these types of situations and all types of things, all right? Go visit my website and see what kind of packages are available to you. You don't definitely have to go at this alone, of course, Um you don't know everything and it is, uh, it can be very priceless to seek wise counsel. All right. And I did it too when I was in my healing process from narcissistic abuse. And we see the results that that has had in my life. So um, if you're stuck in a healing process, if things are just foggy and fuzzy in your mind, you may be in over your head. Go ahead and get the help, all right? And it'll be priceless to you, all right? With that being said, you guys, um, you can ch always check the description below for anything that I have going on, which is always a lot. There's always a lot of resources, guys. I have the two support groups over on Facebook, a public one and a private one, you guys. I've written four wonderful books that can help you do your shadow work and give you additional pearls of wisdom. If you like this content, you're going to love those books. They're available on ebook and hard copy, you guys, on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles. And if you want a signed copy, you can order that from my website, LakiaCrawford.com. I have merchandise from Teespring and I have merchandise on my website. You know, there's all types of things, you guys. Patreon membership. That's a monthly membership where you can support the work that I do and get some amazing perks back. All right. Go on there if you would like to be a part of that and, you know, find a membership tier that works for you. All right. Great ways to support the channel for free is to always hit the like button, like button, you guys, and share the content. All right. For all the views that I get, I want to see that like button being hit. That's like a major way to show love to the channel because it pushes the content out into YouTube world, all right? And that helps the channel grow, which helps the message be spread, you guys, all right? Just think about, you know, so many people always say to me, I wish I had known what I know now. Well, hitting the like button and commenting, being interactive on my channel helps the YouTube algorithm push it forward and you're helping other people. You're paying it forward by doing that, all right? So keep that in mind when you watch my channel, all right? With that being said, you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video, but you know what I like to say at the end of my videos. Never give up on yourself, continue to do the work, and until next time, please take care.